vinyl community and welcome back. Uh, quick video here, I um, I seen a video that Johnny Seed had uploaded which was the small YouTuber tag uh, which is 15 questions um, pretty much about centred around your channel and how you film it and your sort of thoughts on various YouTube um, rules and regulations. Um, Johnny Seed uploaded one which I enjoyed and I was also watching one last night from Dan's vinyl channel. Um, so I'm jumping on the bandwagon. This is mine and I've got my notes so let's go. Question one. Describe your content in one sentence. Vinyl record collecting, reviews, and general music discussion. Pretty much covers, yeah, covers the gist of it. There might be some stray videos which are not related to vinyl and not related to music which creep in, but generally yeah. Question two. What equipment do you use to film? Uh, when I first started filming, I think it was probably the first three or four videos, I was using my mobile phone which is a, a Sony Xperia Z something, I can't remember, which did a okay kind of job. But I had trouble transferring the files off the phone to my computer to edit. And I wasn't 100% happy with the quality of the footage. So I've upgraded the camera. I've got a Canon 200D, which is a DSLR, um, on a tripod with a shotgun mic and that's pretty much it. Um, I'll, I'll show you the camera at some point but obviously I'm filming on it so I'm gonna have to try and work out. I could film the camera on my mobile phone but then it's gonna take me the best part of an hour and a half to try and find the files on my phone to transfer them to the computer. So I'm sure if you Google a Canon 200D or if you're in um, North America, it's a Canon SL2 Rebel, I believe. But it's the same camera, just a different name. So that's what I use. Question three, what do I use to edit? I don't actually have an answer for this. Um, <clears throat> I'm between editing software. I can't find one. I don't want to spend a fortune on editing software. Most of them are a subscription, the, the, the better ones. And I can't justify paying a monthly fee and I can't find a decent one just to buy the software. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, question four. Which YouTuber do you resemble the most in terms of content? Um, pretty much any other YouTuber that's in the vinyl community. Um, we all do pretty much the same thing with different, slightly different quirks of things that depending on what channel you're watching. Um, but you know what we do. We talk vinyl, we look at vinyl, yeah, it's all about the vinyl. Um, question five. Which big YouTuber would you love to collaborate with and why? For me, it doesn't necessarily have to be a big YouTuber. I would quite happily collaborate with anybody else, particularly in the vinyl community, if I thought it was a good idea for a collaboration. Um, it's pretty difficult. Uh, I'm not that technically minded and I don't really know how it works. And I'll, 
where I live, meeting up with other YouTubers is difficult, even other UK YouTubers, because I'm in the north of Scotland. Um, and as for YouTubers across the water in various other countries, I, I don't know technically how you would collaborate in a video you know, over that distance. I, d I don't know what you could do as a collaboration. Um, if you guys have any ideas, comment down below. But I don't know what, how you would sort of even go about collaborating with somebody from a distance. But if anybody could shed any light on it, comments down below. So yeah, anybody basically I'll collaborate with. If it's a good idea and I like it, I'll collaborate. And the reason why is to further my channel and try and reach a bigger audience, but also to spread the vinyl word as well. Um, what I like about sort of the resurgence of, the, of vinyl, I thought it would all be people my age that used to have vinyl in the story's the same pretty much all over. They got rid of it, they went to CDs and tried to replace the vinyl. And now vinyl's coming back. And I thought it would be all people of a certain age in the vinyl community which are sort of trying to recover their lost vinyl collections. And I am quite impressed with the amount of young people that, that weren't there for the first vinyl revolution. Um, you know, that were brought up on CDs and and mp3 downloads that are discovering vinyl um, so yeah just furthering the the vinyl sort of message and the joys of it does your channel this is question six sorry skipping ahead of myself does your channel meet the new monetization guidelines no nowhere near um, but I'm not really in it for the money um, I'm in it because I enjoy filming the videos. I enjoy trying to think of ideas for videos and just basically going through my records, speaking to the camera. Um, I like the interaction with um, people's comments and replying to the people's comments. Um, so I'm not really in it for the money. I'm in it for the enjoyment. It's a hobby. I enjoy doing it. It's an extension of my interest in vinyl and it's all about the music. All about the music. Question seven. Do you think the new guidelines are fair? I haven't really thought about it. I know that you need a thousand subscribers before you can live stream. Now, I don't think I would ever live stream. That fills me with fear. I like to film something, be happy with it, edit it and then upload it and know that I'm happy with what I've done. And live streaming, I don't really know. It's not for me. But I know that some people do want to live stream who don't have um, 100 subscribers, which I think possibly that is a little unfair. A thousand subscribers for a new channel is a lot. Um, so yeah, maybe that is a little bit unfair. With regard to monetization, um, I can't, is it fourth? I can't remember. You need 4,000 hours of videos viewed plus a thousand subscribers before you can monetize your channel. I don't think you'd make a lot of money with a thousand subscribers. Um, you need thousands upon thousands of subscribers to make any money from it. Um, so no, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it for the enjoyment and we'll see where it goes. Question eight. What do you classify as a small YouTuber? Well, going back to my previous comment there about not being able to make a lot of money from a thousand subscribers. Um, <clears throat> I would say 10,000 subscribers would be getting into being a 
medium to large YouTuber. Um, question nine. If you had more money, equipment or support, what content would you make? I would just do the same. Um, vinyl hauls, vinyl related videos, which um, is what my interest in. Um, I would possibly like to have a go at shooting a short film, sort of three or four minute short film Moving on. Question 10. Do you watch and support other small YouTubers? Yes, I do. Um, I subscribe to a lot of channels, mainly smaller ones. Um, the problem I find is you can't watch everybody's content. It's just impossible. There isn't enough hours in the day to watch every video that everybody you subscribe to puts up. It just can't be done. And I often worry about people, people that may tag or mention me in a, mention my channel in one of their videos and I miss that video and I don't react to the fact or thank them for the fact that they've mentioned me. And it, I worry, that, that keeps me awake at night, worrying. Somebody mentioned me in a video and I've not seen it and they think I'm being ignorant by not replying. Well, if that has happened, if, if, any, if you have mentioned me in a video and I've missed it, please let me know and I will go and watch it. And I do appreciate it if you have, but... As I say, you just can't watch everybody's content. So I tend to have a few channels which I get, um, I've clicked on the little grey bell so I get notified of uploads and comments. Um, so I have a handful of channels which I, I watch regularly. Um, but yeah. I watch as much as I can. Luckily in my job I have a lot of waiting around time. Um, so I quite often watch stuff on my phone um, while I'm at work. So, But like I say, it's just physically impossible to watch everything that everybody you subscribe to puts up. It can't be done. Not when you've got a full-time job. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, question 12. When do you upload? I don't have a set schedule. Um, I don't have a set schedule for recording videos or uploading them. Um, whenever I get a chance to film, if I've got an idea, whenever I get a chance to film it, I'll film it. I don't always have time to edit it straight away, especially with my carry on over trying to find the uh, the holy grail of editing software. By the way, if anybody does have any recommendations for free or cheap video editing software, please stick me a link down in the comments um, because I'm really struggling to find something. Don't want to spend a fortune. Um, but yeah, if you've got any recommendations. But uh, yeah, basically I, up uh, I upload um, just whenever I can. Um, it's usually on my days off or around my days off, which are Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, so yeah, no, no strict schedule. It's very loose, sort of, just whenever I can. Question thirty: Where do I want my channel to be in a year's time? Um, I would like, I would like more subscribers. I would like more content and maybe a bit of variation in my content as I hinted to earlier on I'd like to have a go at sort of some of the sort of you know a short film or maybe going out to a record store or and taking the camera along you know an outside broadcast you know add a bit of variety um, 
But in a year's time, I would like more subscribers, more content, be regularly uploading video and uh, commenting on other people's videos and engaging with the vinyl community in general. That would be my my um, goal for a year. Um, tell us your social medias, question 14. Um, Twitter and Discogs are really the, I know Discogs isn't really a social media, but the, uh, I've got links in, on, if you have a look on my about page, um, I've got a link to my Twitter and a link to my Discogs and also up in the channel header there is a link to both of them. So you can check them out and you can send me a request if you wish on Twitter and I will follow you. Question 15. Does pineapple belong on a pizza? Now, you will understand this is purely my personal opinion. And I know not everybody out there is going to share that. But pizza and pineapple should not even be in the same room together. As I told Johnny Seed in the comments of his small YouTuber tag video. Johnny, no. Pizza and pineapple do not belong together. So there you have it. I'm sure there'll be some controversy over my pizza and pineapple comments. Um, so that's it. it. Like I said, it was just a quick video. Um, just want us to do that to get that out of the way. I'm planning, um, I've got lots of ideas for different videos, but it's just finding the time. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, one thing I just wanted to say, I know some of my subscribers um, are over in Canada and I've just been watching the news and there's some pretty horrific footage of um, sort of heavy rain and snow melt causing floods over there. So if any of my subscribers are near these areas or involved with these flooding, um, please take care and, you know, my thoughts are with you and I hope it all works out. Um, it did look really pretty bad, but the flagging it up as uh, being part of global warming, so who knows, but um, yeah, take care if you're in uh, Canada, so thinking of you. Anyway, that's it. Um, see you for the next one. Bye for now. Yeah, remember has been, is, always will be, but the music